Hi, my name is Marcel Fon, I'm a classical guitar player and today I want to help you improve your slur technique or what is also commonly referred as pull-off and hammer-on. After learning the main slur concepts in this tutorial, you can go and use my video of slurs workout if you would like to do the whole exercise while I coach you through the session. This is as close as I can get to a one-to-one -one lesson having the tutorial plus the workout. So I really hope that this format will help to many players out there who are learning and practicing on their own. As I mentioned, we have ascending and descending slurs. The ascending, also called hammer-ons, is where from a lower pitch note, we hammer on the finger of the left hand to produce a higher pitch note. On the other hand, for the descending slurs, we start from a higher pitch note and we use the finger of the left hand to pull off the note to produce the next one. And therefore they receive the name of the hammer on and pull off because they just reflect the action of the left hand. The usage of the slurs can vary quite a lot depending on the musical context where you find them. So as you get more advanced, you will discover more and more nuances on these two techniques to match the musical needs that you have in every moment. For sake of simplicity, I'm going to show you today the basics of what entails a good technique of ascending slurs or descending slurs, so that you can eventually build up on that. So let's start with the ascending slurs. First of all, for the slurred note to sound good, the action needs to happen fast. Now, one of the main problems that I see repeating very, very often is that speed turns out to be not only speed, but also a too large movement. And to gain precision, you should not be going much too far with the finger of the fretboard, but you should remain close and let this very nearby action happen, but very fast. So I don't even need to plug the string for it to sound. If I just go fast, it will sound. Now, a little practice that you can do with this before you move to the whole workout is try practicing staying here very, very close by, and then you just lower the finger as quickly as you can and see if without playing with the right hand, you can produce any tone. You can try with one, two, then you can also try with one, three. You stay close and then you just really quickly go up here. And then same thing for one, four. If you like, add also the other combinations of two, three and three, four. Now, very, very, very important that you need to take care while you practice this is that you don't develop any kind of reflex tension while you're trying to implement speed on your movement. So I'll picture for you what happens. Usually when we wanna go fast, let's say that I wanna hammer on fast with the middle finger, what it happens is this. And we kind of reflect a lot of tension from the hand out of these fingers. So what do you do if you see this happening and how can you avoid it? First, lower the speed of the slur. If necessary, to the point that you just do repeats, let's say I'm practicing one and two combinations, I just move very slightly the second finger, making sure that these two fingers are not creating any reflex movement like this or any tension whatsoever. And then very slowly I start moving my second finger up and down, not intending to make any slur whatsoever, just to control the movement. And you have to make it slow enough so that you can see that these fingers are not reacting in this way. Always stay nice and relax. As you see that this movement does not interfere with the other fingers, you can start to increase the speed and eventually every time add a little bit more strength to the hammer until you start to produce the note. But always pay attention that the other fingers are not getting tensed. This exercise is very easy in one way for your left hand because there has to be zero tension, zero tiredness, but it's much more demanding for your brain because you really have to make sure you're giving the right commands to the hand. Most of the time we tend to practice something without really thinking what's happening and the hours we spend doing technique are actually more damaging than good. So it's very important that you're smart on that and the repeats that you do, make sure that they are correct and they are building on something positive and good for your technique. As a last and very important tip as you practice this slur with a metronome is keep the tempo. Don't practice them like this. Why is it not good to play like that? 
Well, first of all, because the slur is just a technique for us to create a different articulation. But if you practice like this, you're implying within this technique that every time you have a slur, the slur is going to be played as close as the previous note. So you're going to have no control of the rhythm whatsoever. And what is gonna happen even worse when you have a fast passage with slurs is that because of this change of speed, you're gonna lose the synchronization with the right hand. So it's going to be very problematic not to control this from the very beginning. Now the solution for this is super simple. You will also see it in the slur workout. You just play the notes, a tempo together with the metronome. So the first note, with a metronome, the first click, on the second click, the slur. Do not anticipate this slur, try to keep it right on the beat so that you get to understand when is the moment to go down and hammer the note. Because this is also part of the practice of the synchronization that the finger activates one millisecond before you need to play the note. So let's go for the descending slurs or pull-offs. So here we'll give you some indications on what you need to take care of for the descending slurs. In this case, we start off from a on string position with both fingers on the string. And so basically the action is not pulling this finger upwards like this, but pulling it down like that. So down to the next string. This pulling motion and the way you get to the string will dictate the quality of the sound of your descending slur. Now you will be asking, but if I pull down like this, then when I take this finger off, I will also hear the fourth string. So that is part of the practice, guys, that you have to pull off and learn to lift up the finger nice and clean. Of course, I would say it's a bit obvious that when you pull off the finger, you really don't have to start putting pressure on the next string because then it's going to be really difficult for not having a sound on the string that you don't want to play. So add the necessary pressure and just pull and imagine a circle that then you come back to the string without touching the next note. Due to the fact that the pull off requires two fingers to stay already on the string, it can happen that your hand gets really cramped up on the neck like this and you get much too close or on the contrary just to cover every situation i can imagine try not to be too much far out here if you are in the fourth string don't be like this but also don't be like that this is terribly wrong or even if you're here you can just apply the same type of mistakes So as I spoke in the video of left hand position, you want to stay nice and curved, relax without forcing your fingers out, but also not your fingers in. And you want to stay well here with the wrist nice um, straight without any tension. If you're here, maybe it's going to be a little bit straight here. You can help yourself with the elbow to kind of bring it a little bit forward, but definitely do not force anything right off the bat like this. It should stay nice and easy. Similarly to the hammer-ons, when we're making a pull-off, I want you to also stay relaxed with the other finger. So this situation is not good. Or this. There is no control whatsoever there. We start to change the hand positioning. Um, these fingers are not reaching the strings in the right way to... There is a lack of control. There are many things going wrong here. So again, when you're in this action, Let's suppose we are doing um, descending slur on two and one. You just want to keep the other fingers here relaxed in position. If you do three and four, same thing. The other fingers are not tense, are not reacting like this. You stay nice around the place. You can apply the same type of exercise like we did before with the pulling. Start with a pull that you can barely hear it, just that you get used to this type of circular motion without having this tension happening and then gradually build up on that. Pay also a little bit of attention to the sound. Try to see if your sound is present, if it's not very thin and squeaky, and make sure that for that, you're pressing a little bit against the fretboard and then downwards, so that you have a nice, rich, full sound. The sound quality of your slurs is closely linked to the control of the motion of the slur itself. So try to see if when you're making the slur, the fingers go sideways, that imagine a, a diagonal this way. So try to avoid it goes like this, or even more weirdly, like that. You just want to imagine that you go along the fret the way down. And of course, after the pull-off, you have to make sure that you 
don't extend the, the motion much too far away. You need to imagine here a small circle. You really don't need to move much the fingers. Try to control here and that will also help with any extra tension that you might have. If you're a beginner, an intermediate, or you just simply feel like you don't have enough creep for these slurs and you don't really have full control of it, I would actually recommend you to do one thing. So in order to take away one of the difficulties, which is the stretch here of the fret, I would recommend you to start on a higher position using the capo. So you can put it on the fourth fret and do the exercise here on the fifth fret, sixth and seventh. Or if in the fifth position you still feel a bit like there's an uncomfortable position for your hand, Try to go up to the seventh position. See that here my fingers are really close together. They are very natural. So it is a good way to practice the motion until you get the hang of it, the control, and then gradually you kind of extend and you get to practice with a little bit more stretch through the fingers. Another benefit of using the capo is that being that the action is so much lower, you will get used to practice with a lot less tension and your hand is gonna be a lot more relaxed and that has so many benefits along the way if you develop a left hand that is not all crumped up while you play. I think the concepts of this tutorial are quite clear, but if you still have any question, please just drop a comment here down below and I will be answering you. And if you want to get extra practice, you can go ahead now and join my slur workout. You will find the link here in the description and we can do together a mini slur session or just store the video in your playlist if you prefer to do it later. I hope you enjoyed it, practice well and smartly and I'll see you in the next video.